So why are we surprised? All the good people keep away from politics. Who will be in politics? It's a vacuum. It will be filled by bad people. If all the good people go abroad or join the private sector, who is going to be in government? <laughs> the, the people that are not so good. And this is what is we're happening. We, we are seeing an intersection of bad people in government, bad people in politics, and our country is running down. It's going down the drain. Now, now even the good ones that want to get involved, that is that kind of a tactical way of edging them out of the country. Because, because they are not a critical mass. There are very few of them. There are very few of them. When we were in the government, only about four of us as ministers could stand up and say we disagreed with President Obasanjo. There are 42 ministers. Only about four that I remember could speak in council against anything Obasanjo wanted to do if we disagreed. Why? So others will just agree with you? Everybody will keep quiet. And this is the problem. When you pick people that have never achieved anything in their lives and put them in these very senior government positions, they want to remain there forever. They will do anything to remain there. They would not tell the president the truth. They would not look at the governor and tell him the truth, which is their job as advisors. Because a minister is an advisor no, to no, the president. In that case, is it the fault of the people or the fault of the man who, 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 who plays them? Because no, it, it is a bit of both. Okay? It is the fault of the elites, in my opinion. I won't say the people. In every society, the elites, those that are privileged with education, money, or influence, are the ones that ought to sit down and set the tone for the structure of that society. Okay? If our elites have chosen not to go into politics and set that tone, as I said, there is a vacuum, the bad ones will take over. We've seen that in Nigeria. So there is, there is that. It is also true that the leader that picks those around him is, cul is culpable because you are responsible for those you select. Okay? You are constrained to some extent because our constitution, for instance, says that uh, uh, you know, the president must appoint a minister from each state. each state. But it doesn't say that you should appoint a criminal from the state. It says that you should look for the best possible person and appoint him to be minister. So uh, there are constraints, but still, I believe that in this country we have so much talent that if we are really looking for uh, square pegs to put in square holes, we'll find them. And there is a... Uh, I, I think it has to do with the sincerity of the person in charge. I, no, no, you, you know, as I said, Leaders must be checked. Absolute power, uh, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So leaders must be checked. It is in their own interest to create a system that they are checked. Okay? If they are not checked, even good people become bad people. I have seen that transformation. I know many people that I have worked with, that I have interacted with, that were really good when we worked together. Some of them have become governors and ministers, and they have become monsters because there is no check and balance. Leaders must be checked throughout history. So it is not just the leader. The people must be able to speak out. The people must complain. The elites must come and say this is not acceptable. But in this country, we have a conspiracy of silence by the elites. Everybody just keeps quiet because everybody is just waiting for his turn. And it is not taking us anywhere. We are all going to be consumed by this crisis. This uh, keg of gunpowder that we are sitting on in which 75% of the population is below the age of 35, they have no jobs, no hope, and they have not seen a country that ever functioned.